Welcome back. You're watching Bloomberg Television. Now to the currency markets. And the pound is pairing back losses. It still remains below $2, though, in the wake of the GDP report we saw earlier from the UK. Yesterday, it fell below the $2 mark for the first time in three months. This after the Bank of England minutes showed that policymakers voted 9-0 for a rate cut. And the pound fell against the dollar and the euro as traders added to bets that the central bank will keep on lowering interest rates to guard against a fallout from financial turmoil. Pound is down again against 14 of the 16 most traded currencies at the moment. A separate report did show that retail sales rose at the slowest pace in more than a year this month. So can sterling continue to weaken against the dollar? Let's get some in-depth analysis now of the currency markets. We're joined now by Peter Rosenstrike. He's chief market analyst at ACM. Peter, good to see you this morning. Thank you very good much for joining you. me. Um, the pound now below the $2 mark. How long have you been waiting for this to happen? <laughs> I suppose what happens next? Where does it go? Well, I think it's going to continue to weaken. Um, you know, I think that move below the uh, psychological uh, $2, um, two mark was, was pretty substantial and uh, pretty dramatic last night. Uh, we're looking to, for a move in the short term, probably about the 196 uh, area. You know, I think if you take everything that's been going on in the last two weeks, the BO minutes, the softer retail sales, the benign CPI figures just above the um, uh, 2% uh, target for the BOE, uh, that little bit of phrase uh, from the minutes saying substantial loosening in monetary policy might be needed. You take that all in a whole um, and then looking at the larger uh, UK economy and say, well, where does the BOE need to go at, you know, 4.5 or even 4 percent? It means that the uh, pound has a way to go um, and will continue to soften. This shift in thinking by the Bank of England, the MPC, what do you make of it? Has it come to you as a surprise or some almost a move too little too late almost? Well, you know, I don't, I don't think it's a surprise. I don't think it's too little too late. They waited for the data um, and built up a, a very strong argument uh, for why they need to cut rates. They actually seen, uh, saw the sort of the credit tur turmoil and how it was going to affect the larger uh, uh, U.K. economy, and they took action. So I think it was a very smart move. Um, I think we're going to go a lot quicker than the market expects, down to 4.5 and even uh, 4.0 uh, with one eye on inflation, that is uh, the MPC having one eye on inflation and really one eye on money markets. Um, but we're going to move very quickly down to those figures. Peter, to four, we're looking at 150 basis points here. How quickly will that happen then? Well, you know, it, it's not going to happen overnight, but I think it's going to qu happen quicker uh, than markets are originally anticipating. Again, a lot depends on the inflation data and how it's going to work itself out. How's the um, food and energy data, um, food and energy price data affecting your outlook at the moment? It's still obviously something that needs to be balanced by all central banks. Correct. You know, I think, you know, them discounting, uh, well, in the developed countries, I think uh, the fact that they're discounting the, the sharp increase in food and energy as, as perhaps a little bit uh, blind, they really need to, you know, base a little bit more on the headline and not just on the core. I think that's very, very critical. And especially in emerging markets uh, where they base their CPI uh, uh, currency, ba uh, their CPI inflation baskets uh, very heavily on food and energy prices, they're going to be extremely affected by the spike in, in in, uh, these commodity prices. Okay, let's look further afield in the Europe as well. What are you making of the Euro's prospects now? We still have Jean-Claude Trichet and mm -hmm. his um, committee still defiantly um, acknowledging higher inflation risks. Yeah. No, I think uh, the euro is perhaps a little bit um, uh, a better position than, than the U.K. Um, the, the hawkishness of the uh, ECB has been very supportive of, of the euro, uh, barring the last couple of weeks. I think they'll continue to keep an eye on inflation and keep that uh, tightening bias, and that's going to be uh, relatively uh, good for the euro. How destructive is a tightening bias or a potential tightening bias going to be for the economy, do you think? You know... Um, you know, we, we haven't seen too much uh, sort of a, a negative effect, especially when you look at the German economy. Uh, recently, they, it's been uh, declining, but, but from very, very high levels. So I'm not sure that uh, it's going to be too much of a negative or too much a drag on the, the global, uh, the, U, the Eurozone economy, but that's yet to be seen. Okay, Peter, we're going to take a quick break. Peter's going to be back with me in just a couple of minutes. He's going to give me his predictions for 2008. You don't want to miss it.
Welcome back. You're watching Bloomberg Television. It's time now to get more on the currency market outlook for 2008. I'm back with Peter Rosenstrike, who's chief market analyst at ACM. Peter, I'm going to put you on the spot now. I want to know what you're thinking about for next year. Forget Christmas coming up. Mm -hmm. We've spoken about the pound. We've already mm -hmm. seen it go below $2. You're seeing 198 in the first quarter, going back down yeah. to 190 Why? What's going to drive this? You know, I think, uh, first of all, I think what we discussed earlier, the fact that the BOE needs to cut um, down to 4 Four or five, four point five, maybe even four uh, percent, has not been priced in the market, and it needs to be aggressively uh, priced in, and that's really going to send the uh, the cable to these lower levels. That the fact that you know while we're seeing weakness in in certain sectors of the U.S. economy, you know housing and and consumer sentiment, we're not seeing uh, all the the weakness sort of carry over. And I think, you know, somewhere around uh, Q2, Q3, within the U.S., we're going to start seeing an upswing in their, uh, their, their growth prospects. And I think that's going to, you know, do very well for, uh, for the um, U.S. dollar throughout the rest of the year. Okay. Well, you've spoken about the U.S. dollar going to be mm -hmm. doing well. I'm looking at your yen forecast as well. Yeah. Um, not too much of a move, but you're seeing a move yeah. lower for the yen. Uh, yep. You're not convinced by the interest rate hiking argument for the Bank of Japan, <laughs> then? No, 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 no. I, well, I'm a more of a a, a, a Japanese bear by you know by uh, trade. Um, I think the BOE, excuse me, BOJ is not going anywhere fast. And I think that the language, the change of language that we heard last night, moving from expanding uh, moderately to uh, pace of growth is slowing. You know, really reflects the pessimism that the BOJ is seeing uh, in their growth prospects. You look at the Tankin report, uh, their forward-looking statement uh, when it comes to March. It shows in, uh, a broad-based decline in uh, business sentiment. Sentiment. I think, uh, you know, and then you have sort of a political infighting that's going on, which is going to delay the BOJ's uh, elective of a new chairman. All of this, to me, just says that the, the, the Japanese economy is not going to go anywhere fast. Their monetary policy is going to be sort of stuck in a mire, and it's not going to bode well for the, for the yen. Peter, I'm going to squeeze the euro dollar out of you quickly. ECB still hawkish on inflation, yet you're putting euro dollar yeah. back down to 136. Correct. You know, this sort of, um, this, for the short term move sort of um, uh, caught me a little bit off guard. I did see uh, dollar uh, strength in uh, sort of the, the end of Q1. Um, mm. So this sort of had adjusted our forecast just slightly. But okay. I do believe that, you know, we're starting to, the, the, the BOE, excuse me. The ECB is going to start to look to rate, cut rates around Q3, and that's going to be factored in slightly before that, and that's going to be uh, priced in the, in the euro dollar. Peter, I've got to stop you. Peter, so good to see you. Peter Rosenstrike, their chief market analyst at ACM. That's it from me. It's John Dawson.